every single possible emotion you could from extreme ecstasy of it's almost over to what it took to get there, those doubts, those fears, oh, I can't, I don't think I can finish. I look out and I say, I only want to be out there about eight hours. I don't want to be out there any longer than that. And, and you try and swallow it in small steps. Swim first, bike, then run. It's a real challenge between pain and patience when you're creating the day that's called the Iron Man. No time to rest. Boom, boom, one sport, next sport. The pounding on your legs just never stops. Stop. First a little blister will form, and then your quads will start to get tight. Get tight. Eventually you have to find a way to zone it out. This has just enough risk that you think you're going to die at some point out there, but somehow you come out of it. Kyle Lewis here on the Kona Coast. This is where the day begins, at dawn, at the edge of the Pacific, on the Big Island, Hawaii. It begins here, the supreme test of body and mind. Hi, everyone. I'm Dan Hicks, and we welcome you to this 15th anniversary of the Iron Man that began back in 1978. There was a $3 entry fee. There were just 15 competitors. Today, nearly 1,500 from around the world. For those who have journeyed to this Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, it'll be a day unlike any other. It begins with a 2.4-mile swim, a 112-mile bike ride, a marathon, 26.2 miles. Distances made even more daunting by Hawaii's heat and humidity. The elite athletes will finish late in the afternoon, but it'll be closer to midnight before the rest of the triathletes finally finish the course. Now, here are the men and women likely to challenge for this championship and the stories of others, the kind of stories which make this day on this island unlike any other in sport. You wonder if anyone is well rested before this race. It's 5 a.m., two hours before the start, but long lines have already formed behind the registration tables. Part of the ceremony here, your number penned in black marker several places on the flesh. Number one is arguably the best triathlete ever, Mark Allen, seeking his fifth straight Gatorade Ironman title. Mark Allen, the quiet and intimidating. Paula Newby Frazier, hoping for a sixth Ironman title, but also hoping an injured ankle holds up. Her rival is Erin Baker, two-time Ironman champion. She missed last year's race, taking time off for the birth of her first child. Chile's Christian Bustos, last year the leader for much of the marathon. Some think he can end Allen's reign. Another contender, Finland's Polly Kuru, unlike Allen, wary of his emotions. And though only one man and one woman will be named champion today on this island, every triathlete sets some kind of goal. Chucky Valupec, Chucky V, underfinanced, he often sleeps in his car but he could crack the top 10 here. 63-year-old Madonna Luder in her seventh Gatorade Ironman, a nun with a unique ministry. 76-year-old Jim Ward, still defying time. In the uncertainty of darkness, fathers and mothers, husbands and wives are linked one last time. After all the sacrifice, all the training, now, as the sun rises, there is the waiting, and the worry, the wondering. No one, not even the defending champion, knows just what this day will bring. This unique test of body and mind that begins at sunrise on the shore at Kailua Corner.
It's 6.45 a.m. Many of the competitors are gathering now in the shallows of the Pacific. Among them, a 1984 Olympic swimming gold medalist and NBC sports colleague. He worked the event last year for us, but this year, Mike O'Brien decided he wanted a closer perspective. Here at the swim start, there's a lot of people here, and if you look on their faces, you can see nervous energy and a lot of tension. I feel the same way. It's my first Gatorade Ironman. I've never done a triathlon this long. And I know that I've got a lot of butterflies in my stomach, but that's telling me that I'm really excited for the race and ready to go. Now, trying to get through these 1,500 swimmers could be a problem, but what you do is you seed yourself according to your swim ability. And since I'm a faster swimmer, I'll go in and jump in near the front, find one of the faster pros, try and hang on their feet through the race, and have a good swim to start out this long day. As Mike O'Brien mentioned, courtesy prevails at this point, the slower swimmers hanging back at the start. But there is no hanging back for this 31-year-old German, Wolfgang Dietrich, the strongest swimmer here. His progress in the bike and run have made him a legitimate contender for this year's title. Yet here, neither Dietrich nor anyone else bubbles with overconfidence. The Gatorade Ironman triathlon is staged for the largest and perhaps most forbidding of the Hawaiian islands, Hawaii. On the western side of the island from Kailua Kona, the course moves north, some 50 miles to Havi then back 60 miles to Keoho for the marathon, the final leg. Part one, the turbulent ocean swim, 2.4 miles. Several boats mark the turnaround for the finish back at the Kailua Pier. Then it's the bike portion, 112 miles. First north on the Queen Kaahumanu Highway, turning around at Javi, then back along the lava fields, unsheltered from the sun, ending in Keoho at the Kona Surf Resort. Finally, the marathon course, 26.2 miles. From the coast road, runners move back onto the Queen K Highway into the boiling valley of the Natural Energy Lab. Back to the highway, finishing on a leaky drive in Kailua Kona. It's now close to 7 a.m. The sun is beginning to warm the day. And now, in the final minutes before the start, faces seem almost frozen, blurring ahead nothing. Lost in a kind of self-hypnosis. Championship has begun. Ahead, more than two miles of ocean, and after that, the beauty and beastly heat of the Big Island. Back with more from Hawaii's Kona Coast after the A Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, presented by Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold, and by the Gatorade Company, official sponsor of the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon World Championship. By Timex, makers of the Indiglo Nightlight, the first lighted watch dial that you can really see in the dark. By Reebok, who reminds you that on planet Reebok, there are no limits, no boundaries. By Canon, a world leader in office equipment. And by Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold from Nordic Track, the leader in fitness equipment. From 50 states and over 49 countries, they come putting body and soul to the ultimate challenge. But when they get to the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, they all speak the same language. Gatorade! 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 Because no matter where they're from, endurance athletes from around the globe know that Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps them perform at their best. It's proven year after year in Hawaii. Nothing translates into performance like Gatorade.
It feels good. This is a credit card, so it's gold. Yahoo! I mean, no card is more accepted on the planet, but it doesn't make you some kind of celebrity. Actually, maybe it could. I mean, with Gold MasterCard's new Master Guest service, you can get free personal vacation planning assistance. The celebrities always have personal assistance. Master Guest can even save you up to 30% on great vacation packages. And celebrities are always getting special deals, so I guess Gold MasterCard could make you a celebrity. See you in the tabloids. Gold MasterCard, it's more than a gold card, it's smart money. Tom O'Keefe is in the grip of a really tough cold. But he's about to break free with an effervescent rush of relief. Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Medicine. Pills take time to dissolve, but Alka-Seltzer Plus is ready the moment you take it. Rushing powerful medicines to soothe your aches. Relieve your runny nose. Free your breathing. Nothing rushes relief like Alka-Seltzer Plus. Welcome back to the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon. The swim is just underway, and Craig Masback is with the lead pack. Dan, sometimes I think that the swim is an underappreciated segment of this race. Sure, it's shorter than the bike and run portions, but it does set the tone for an entire day of competition. Now, if you've ever done any swimming at your local 25-yard pool, think of this. They are racing the equivalent of 176 laps of that pool in the ocean with 1,500 other people thrashing about. Normally, the swim is not determinative in this race, but there's a critical mass of outstanding swimmers here today that could drag a good swimmer like Mark Allen to a very fast time, leaving a slower swimmer like Christian Bustos way behind. Hannah Storm is up ahead at Kailua Pier to tell us about the next challenge that these athletes will face. Craig, from the moment these athletes emerge from the water, they will encounter absolute mayhem here at the swim to bike transition. This is what happens. Many of them will hustle through here, try to wash off the salt water from the ocean in the showers. Then they'll run over here, and in this maze of bags, they'll look for their equipment. Then it's back here to change clothes, over here to find the bike, hop on and get out of here. And the top athletes will do all of this, transform themselves from swimmers to bikers in less than a minute. Why bother with a few seconds in a race that lasts eight or nine hours? Well, when you consider that back in 1983, this race was decided by a mere 33 seconds, every moment is crucial to the front runners, and the transition can be key. Dan? Thanks, Hannah. At the bottom of your screen, that's Wolfgang Dietrich with 24-year-old swim specialist Nate LaRondi taking a separate line away from a larger group on the right. Nearing the halfway point, it's still a feeling out period, and Dietrich wants to make sure he doesn't end up swimming in a slow pack. Now, let's rejoin Craig Masback. Dan, at the head of what is now a lead pack are two strong swimmers, not expected to be a factor on the bike and run. Closer to us is Brent Eminent of Honolulu. With him is Canadian Steve Merker. Dietrich and Lorandi now join the pack, trying to take advantage of the drafting effect that comes from swimming in someone else's way. The collection of boats just ahead marks the turnaround point of the swim. With about a mile behind them, the leading swimmers have a little more than a mile to go. If the early part of the race was a lot like swimming in a washing machine because of all the thrashing arms and legs, now it's down to an easy looking rhythm. Good freestylers look smooth and relaxed in the water, almost as if their arms are too long for their bodies. About 30 seconds behind, this is the second group of swimmers. And this pack includes the defending champion, Mark Allen, and in the yellow cap, the first woman, Germany's Uta Mukul. She's not expected to be much of a factor in the bike or run, much like the current leaders of the men's pack. I'm surprised to see NBC's Mike O'Brien there in the orange cap at the top of the screen, swimming by himself. He's not taking advantage of the drafting effect. In a third group, in the yellow cap is Wendy Ingram, the second woman, and to her left, Christian Busto, one of the men's favorites. Ten swimmers remain in the lead pack as they reach halfway. Every swimmer has a signature style as their hands plot an S-shaped course under the water, seeking maximum thrust. And look how close to the boat they're swimming, seeking to shave off every possible second in a day-long race. At better than 20 minutes per mile pace, they'll be back on land in less than 50 minutes. The course heads left here around another anchored boat. But look at the lead swimmer on the right. He's heading between the boats, the wrong direction. Those who blindly followed him quickly realized their error, having almost paid the price for someone else's suspect navigational skills. 
still out front one of Hawaii's top triathletes, Brent Eminem. It's not enough to be good at one of the Ironman's three disciplines. He'd have to improve his best time by 90 minutes to be a contender. Here again is the second pack with Mukul in the yellow cap, still leading the women. Mark Allen is also part of this group. Mike O'Brien continues his impressive swim. For the first time, he's in a drafting position. A year ago, he watched this event. Now he's in the thick of it. For the moment, this is, after all, his specialty. And determined to stay close is Paula Newby Fraser from Zimbabwe. Recovering from injury, she fears this could be her most difficult Ironman. As the swimmers push now toward the pier, a young Australian waits here in support of his fiance, but also wondering what might have been. Greg Welch, 28, is one of the world's top triathletes, second in the 1991 Ironman. But Welch injured his knee just 10 days ago when he was hit by a car while training, and so ended the season of one of the few in the sport who seemed capable of defeating Mark Allen. But if Welch wants to know about defying setbacks, he can look to Jim McLaren, who holds the Ironman record for amputees. McLaren is here despite a June accident, struck by a van while competing, paralyzed. Hannah Storm has his story. Jim McLaren was once a Yale football star and an aspiring actor. But in 1985, suddenly, disaster. He was initially pronounced dead after being hit by a bus. Jim lost his leg, but not his will. He put his life back together, using triathlons as a means to survive and triumph. Eight years later, the unthinkable, a second accident. But for Jim, merely another test. I mean, I think people could look at me before and say, well, he's just missing a leg, he's young, of course he can overcome this. But now it's, you know, in many ways I had nothing four months ago and still was able to salvage my philosophy and know that it works, that behind every tragedy, there's an opportunity for, for a gift or for something to learn. McLaren has learned that the pain and darkness he once confronted along the course are not so far removed from the challenges he must now face in his rehabilitation. Sometimes my physical therapist will say to me, come on, think of those marathons. And it finally dawned on me, it's right, it parallels it. It's a new, it's a new pain, but it's something to push through, you know? And for months in therapy, I really wasn't able. It's interesting when you can't physically go out and just kill the world. You have to just accept that it hurts, I'm crying, but I can do a little bit. And it's like you learn to deal with those fears inside yourself, and it doesn't matter whether it's being paralyzed or running 26 more miles. I think it's the same, it comes from the same spot inside us. This is why triathletes, this is why it's such a family atmosphere here. It's why people appreciate each other so much, because everyone knows that they're going out there and dealing on the some of the you know, darkest levels with themselves. An outpouring of love and support from the family of triathletes has enabled Jim to work through the difficult times and to grow as a person. This whole experience has made me a much more selfless, uh, loving person. And I mean, I had plenty of that to go around before, but this has really blown that out. And, and I mean, in that sense, I'm thankful for it. I wouldn't trade it, just like I wouldn't have traded my leg. And, and I joked about it, but I thought, well, if I got the kind of joy that I received from eight years after losing my leg, this is going to be a heck of a payoff someday, you know? But I believe that, and I think that's true. Jim's unshakable faith in the human spirit has given him the strength to do what was once thought impossible. He's recently started to walk. We'll return to Hawaii in just a moment. Until now, lighted watch dials were really hard to see in the dark. But the Indiglo nightlight from Timex is so dramatically brighter. Nighttime will never be the same. Before you thought to dream, Canon had a vision. Before you have a problem, Canon has the solution. We have a way of looking ahead to give your office unlimited possibilities right now. When the rest say you can't, Canon says you can. Canon. Now you can. I love 
steak. Especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. Tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... They get you here. And they get you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. There are times you can feel your body heat rising. Higher and higher. Fortunately, there's degree antiperspirant. It's body heat activated. Every time your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection to keep you cooler, drier. You're up next. Thank you. Good morning. Nothing protects you like Degree. Your body heat turns it on. They tell themselves just one more stroke. Another leg kick. Another stroke. Another breath. Pushing. Pushing. Pushing themselves toward land. Welcome back to Hawaii in the Gatorade Ironman. Now let's sink you down to Hannah Storm at the swim to bike transition area. Dan, 48 minutes, 30 seconds. Wolfgang Dietrich, the first out of the water for the third straight year. He's more than two minutes ahead of defending champion Mark Allen and also appearing amazingly fresh after the 2.4 mile swim. He's bolting towards the changing tent. Also among the leaders in seventh place, easily the best swimmer in network television, NBC's Mike O'Brien. Dietrich certainly has the right methods in the middle of all this madness. He heads for his bicycle, doing the rest of his dressing on the run. With his expected rivals still in the water, Dietrich is already on the course, heading toward the Green Bay Highway. And as he adds distance to his advantage with every second, Allen finally emerges from the Pacific, 22nd out of the water, and looking sort of like a worried commuter trying to catch the morning train. Right behind Allen, American Ken Grog, winner of Ironman events this year in New Zealand and Canada. And on the heels of both, the fastest female swimmer, Germany's Uta Mugen. Finland's Pauli Kulu dashes up the exit ramp, 51 minutes on the clock now. Meanwhile, Mark Allen struggling to emerge from the changing tent. No, 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 that's it. Get out! As Allen loses precious seconds in the transition area, Wolfgang Dietrich climbs the hill out of Kailua Kona, already a half mile away from the pier. Finally, Allen begins his chase. But other contenders just out of the water. The top cyclist here, Jurgen Zag, is about four minutes behind Dietrich. Just slightly ahead of Zach is Chilean Christian Busto scurrying to his bike, as usual, forced to make up time after a relatively slow swim. Cruelty, it is a key feature of the course, which climbs upward as soon as the competitors get on their bikes. About to make the turn onto the Queen K Highway, number one, Mark Allen, number three, Kiru, and number 14, Kenny Glock. And now defending female champion, Paula Luby Fraser sprints out of the Pacific. She is right on target with her swim. Uta Mukul has been on the bike for two minutes now. And as the race proceeds without her, Luby Fraser dripping, barefooted, she's bypassing the changing tent going straight to her bike. Mukul's ride at the top is brief. Californian Wendy Ingram with a power move assumes the lead. Approaching an hour in the water now, former champion Aaron Baker with a slow swim, dangerously close to falling out of contention. Up ahead, it seems that newbie Frazier has helped herself with a swift transition. The five-time champion is on the road. As is Jurgen Zak, who has promised to push the pace in the bike and perhaps fatally weaken Mark Allen. But first, he'll have to catch him, and Allen's already burning the asphalt to reach the leader, Dietrich. Will this be the German's year? Will Dietrich at last hold on to the advantage gained in the swim? For the moment, he's alone in first. Meanwhile, the new mom, Aaron Baker, struggling miles behind the leaders. 
And so the race now continues along an otherworldly landscape on this volcanic island, along dried lava beds under an unforgiving Hawaiian sun. Hour after hour, mile after mile after mile. I love the berry bars. We like the shakes. We have the cereal for breakfast. Or as a snack. More fiber, less fat, and packed with high energy carbohydrates. I've made Matola Foods part of my active lifestyle. Matola Foods, chosen sponsor of the Ironman Triathlon. Call now and discover what everyone's talking about. Matola Foods have really made a difference for me. Imagine what they could do for you. Call now and experience the healthy Matola difference. When you go out to play, you're gonna get thirsty. And when you're thirsty, you better have your Gatorade. It goes down easy, quenches to the core. Quenches your deep down body thirst 30% faster than water. Why get an inferior foam shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have something more advanced, giving you a closer shave with less irritation than foam? Edge Gel. Ultimate closeness. Ultimate comfort. That's the edge. in the bike portion of the Gatorade Ironman, Germany's Wolfgang Dietrich retains the lead. And as yet not too far behind, we find our own Ironman, Mike O'Brien. The swim went a lot better than I thought. I, uh, I swam along the buoys and the leaders were outside of the buoys, so I figured I could cut some time, and I think I did at the halfway point. And then I just uh, kind of did the same thing on the way back, caught a draft and put in a kick. Had a lot better swim than I thought. Uh, Dude, it's only about 80 out here right now. It feels pretty good. Well, Mike, it may feel good now, but we'll see how you feel a little bit later on. Now up ahead on the Queen K Highway, Wolfgang Dietrich's lead is about to be challenged. Though he appears unsteady as if he were riding his older brother's bicycle, Chile's Christian Bustos has joined the chasers and a charge is about to be mounted. It is being provoked by 28-year-old Jurgen Zak. 51 competitors finished ahead of him in the swim, but now these fish are out of the water, and Zak is reeling them in. But Dietrich has so far held them off, and a little farther ahead looks the unmistakable presence of Mark Allen. And those athletes with the nerve to challenge him often find themselves crushed in his grip. Mark Allen, known as the grip, the grip of death. In back, Zach Surge continues. He shoots by the venerable two-time winner, Scott Tindler. Another in the hunt is 29-year-old Californian Mike Pig, and he could alter the complexion of this race. One of the sport's premier cyclists, Pig hammers at the pedals. 20 miles into the race, Dietrich powers forward. But then, it's over. Ironman veteran Ken Glaw offers a brief pleasantry while leaving the river of chasers past Dietrich. What was gained in the water has now been lost. And as this race enters another chapter, Dietrich pauses, allowing himself a few moments to consider how to respond. He knows this much. Nothing decisive has occurred. 90 miles of pavement have yet to be covered. The heat and humidity have not yet arrived. A long trek to the lava fields has just begun. Though the pack is still moving at a taxing pace, Allen, always in control, is riding smoothly. Years of training have preceded this day, much of it done in the Rocky Mountain town where triathletes get together to push themselves and playfully humble each other. Boulder, Colorado. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> 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 
Get that on film, will you? <laughs> they are the most boring people I have ever met. Boulder can make you or break you. And it just depends on how intelligent you are. Everybody's a nobody because there's so many good athletes here. This is my job and I love, I absolutely love what I do. I think the other guys watch me for signs of weakness. This year, basically anybody who's won a top race in triathlons is training here in Boulder. It's a double-edged sword. It's great because there's people to keep you motivated, to keep you honest. You can kind of keep your eye on what the other guy's doing. The other side of it is that you really have to watch what's right for yourself and your training because it can become a little bit of a race each time you go out there. Triathlon is such a hard sport. It involves so many hours of training and that even though you're competing against each other and at that level you want to beat each other, to get good you need each other for training. I think you kind of nuke yourself if, if you're antisocial in this sport. Uh, for one thing, I, I think everyone in the sport, especially at the high end, has a lot of respect for each other. It's nice where you can be a friend one day and then an enemy on the race course. It's a nice setup. It makes it fun. That's okay. Look at this. I'm sitting here looking after what's your mom doing? She's out training, isn't she? And I'm sitting here looking after you. It's just not fair. It's not fair. In Boulder, Colorado, Paula Duby Frazier gladly babysits for Aaron Baker's son, Miguel. But at this moment on the Kona Coast, she's now looking to build a crushing margin over her rival. Let's rejoin Hannah Storm. Dan, Newby Frazier had already been on the road for five minutes when Aaron Baker finally got on her bike. So early in the morning of this long day, Baker is prematurely summoning an effort usually reserved for a final killing sprint. Baker's pride is at stake. She has said that she would not be here if she didn't think she could win. But before there is another duel between the sport's chief female rivals, this woman will have to be chased down. Wendy Ingram still has the lead she grabbed more than an hour ago in downtown Kailua Kona. Two minutes behind Ingram, Nubi Frazier now in second place as she rushes past Uta Mukul. Mukul already appearing weary and clearly not capable of making a counter move. Back at the Kailua Pier, the swimming, biking, running nun joyously jogs out of the Pacific. Madonna Booter, one of the sisters for Christian community, certainly Madonna knows that cleanliness is a virtue, so she stops for a special Iron Man shower. More from the Gatorade Iron Man after this short break. Coming January 2nd. The ultimate pursuit of justice. Viper, coming to NBC. Hi, I'm Sally Field, and I'm hosting Saturday Night Live this weekend. Tune in, because I plan to be tanked on gin and tonics, and who knows what'll happen. <laughs> you can't beat by sales. Get down. It's Wonderland Music's rap for sale. Crazy clearance, it's over while other music stores fail. Everything in the store has to go. So he's locking them down really, really, really low. Now through Sunday, Crazy Clarence can't be beat, so check out Wonderland Music for a Christmas tree. Wrap up an acoustic guitar by Washburn from only $139. Swinger line professional five piece drum sets only three forty nine. Boy, that crazy Clarence, he really knows how to rap. Crazy Clarence's Wonderland Music Christmas wrap up sale now through this Sunday with crazy low prices that can't be beat. After my car accident, I was hurt pretty bad. Because we specialize in auto accident claims, we knew exactly what to do. I called Larry Corn and Associates. They took charge. Somebody was finally listening to me. We went to the scene of the accident, talked to witnesses and the police. They handled my case fast and I got all the money I had coming. If you've been injured in an auto accident, call 352-1000 for a free case evaluation. There's no fee unless we win. 
They made the legal system work for me. Relax, unwind. You deserve it. And Polynex makes it easy. Polynex massaging shower heads turn your shower into a refreshing escape. The Polynex Classic Dial Massage has four separate shower heads and three levels of power to vary the intensity from an invigorating jet massage all the way to a calming, gentle rain. When you need to relax, remember Polynex, making you feel right at home. Available at Target. Wheel of Fortune, see for yourself tonight at 7, only on 4. In this 15th Ironman, there's plenty of action in the men's race, as veteran Ken Gla fulfills a promise to keep the pace on it. Gla and wife Jan Wanklin had a baby daughter six months ago, and he says he now races with even greater purpose. Mark Allen is scheduled to join the ranks of fatherhood before Christmas. He strains to react to Gla's move. The plot thickens as Kyle Sage and Jurgen Zak roar past Allen towards the front of the race. Zach has had to struggle back from a five-minute deficit after the swim. Now this hulking figure heads for the front and looks the most relaxed of all. The former iron salesman from Koblenz, Germany, said he wanted to have a three-minute lead after the bike, and he's on his way. Miles behind the lead pack, New Yorker Patty O'Brien is part of the other race here. Like most competing, this is her hobby. She's 40 years old, last year the fastest woman in her age group. Somehow, some way, each day, she juggles work and workouts. Each day, to find the constraints of life in an urban jungle. I get up at 5.30, three times a week to go swimming in Columbia, and it is hell. A couple days I run, a couple days I bike. I like to get my training done in the morning, get it done, and get it out of the way, come to work clear that I've got it done, and then just focus on work. Well, I'm the fashion director for both Rolling Stone and Men's Journal. Um, I mean, every day is totally, totally different. Um, I mean, there's, that's what's great about the job is that it's not, you come in, you know, it's not a nine to five, you don't sit at a desk, you're constantly going, you're constantly moving. Anyway, the, the, um, I thought the color, um, the color print I thought looked amazing. God knows what's gonna happen in a day. Um, it could be anything from going to a shooting, um, going out in the market, doing some market work, uh, being in the office, just doing a lot of paperwork, editing film, uh, making appointments, returning phone calls. I mean, anything can happen. The thing is, you couldn't prop, you couldn't prop this better. It's unbelievable. This kid like, looks like he lives out of his truck. My career is really important to me. You know, I mean, I love trying to balance it. I don't know if I succeed all the time, but I really like trying to do it. I mean, I turned 40 this year, and I know that I will always train. I will train forever. I'll never, I may not always race, but I'll always train because I want to stay in shape. With her schedule, convenience also counts, and O'Brien's workouts aren't just confined to the pool and the roads. Some of her cross-training is done indoors, and there's also weight training. In my mind right now, I don't feel that I'm, that I'm there yet, that I'm, I'm, you know, that I'm at the level of training that I should be. Work has been kind of crazy, so that's kind of, you know, my priorities have been a little bit different this year. Um, the thing is, it's such an incredible race. Anything can happen. I want to finish it. I want to be finished on two legs with dignity. Um, and I like to do it under 11 hours. Um, one of the people that we just shot was um, actually somebody who's going to the Iron Man, um, Chucky V. Chucky who? Crazy triathlete with the mohawk hairdo. He's weird. He's weird. One weird dude. An absolute character. My name's Chucky V, but you can call me Chuck. I won the race today with a little bit of luck. What's he doing in triathlon? I don't know. <gasps> this screaming, sometimes pointy-headed figure. Well, actually, the curiously coiffed Chucky V is a promising triathlete, and he's truly dedicated to the sport. I pretty much live mostly on the road. I rent month to month when I 
can afford it. Usually every weekend I'm racing because that pays the bills better for me. A lot of guys will only race 10 times a year, but I need to race a little more than that in order to survive. So I sleep either inside the car if it's raining or I have a little bedroll. That's it right there, actually. And uh, <laughs> sleeping bag and pillow, you know, air mattress, whatever. I sleep at rest stops or cemeteries. He's got to be kidding. Listen to that. First time, 160,000 miles on it. Got my uh, muffin wrappers. I dream about food at night. Mm, the problem with eating is you have to stop and breathe every once in a while. I hate that. I heard Mark Allen and those guys eat good, so I've been trying. Ah, girls, girls, girls! I've been running around bold all summer trying to get a date with that guy, and he has been blowing me off. Push-up bras, makeup, you name it. Still can't get a date. What's it going to take? 119. 148. It's like I have a name, you know. I have a purpose, too. Though I haven't found it yet, I do have a purpose. You know, I'm looking at paying my dues for another three or four years. My results are getting there, you know, and I'm so much younger than these guys right now. Mark Allen's got 11 years on me. You know, who knows what can happen in 11 years? I mean, granted, I don't think I'll win 10 Nice triathlons and four Hawaii's, but if I win one or two, I'll be all right. Thank you. 400? How's the hair look? The Mohawk's real good in most situations, except when you have a real bad crosswind. And then you gotta be careful, because it'll knock you right off your bike. My hair doubles as a helmet. It's kind of like a sundial, too. If I stand in certain spots, I can tell what time it is by my shadow. I'm a very tense person. <laughs> I like it a lot. I bring you Chucky V. <gasps> what? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's a plane guy. Not. It's Chucky V. A returning to the known universe now, lo and behold, they haven't shaken Chucky e. V yet. In fact, at mile 40, Mr. Velupec is moving up to the head of the lead pack. And perhaps they will now view Chucky e. V a little more seriously. In the meantime, Al is releasing the pack, ready to arrest any break before it gets away. He knows that to lose contact with the front is to risk losing the race. And as the Ironmen turn off the Queen K and onto Route 287, heading for the lush hamlet of Javi, we'll take a break. Hi, I'm Dave Scott. If you want to achieve peak athletic performance, I recommend the Ironman Triathlon Series from Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold. The Ironman Triathlon Edition of the Nordic Sport Cross Training System combines a cross-country skier, stepper, and treadmill all in one. And it's specifically designed for the serious sports enthusiast. From the programmable workout computer that monitors your results to the non-motorized treadmill designed for a safe workout. But you shouldn't rely on aerobic training alone because strength training increases endurance and improves athletic performance. That's why you need the Nordic Flex Ironman Triathlon Edition. You can choose from up to 32 ergonomically designed exercises that let you focus on the muscle group you want to develop. And the patented isokinetic resistance mechanism automatically adjusts to your strength level for fast results and a safe workout. The Ironman Triathlon Series from Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold for people who take their sports seriously. Call now to order or to get free information. We realize there still may be a few people who don't trust TV commercials. So, we came here. Father? Which is brighter, the conventional watch light on the left or this Timex with the Indiglo night light on the right? The one on the right. Thank you for your time. Oh, stay a while, my son. We don't get many advertising people in here. Listen, it's a credit card. It does not make you a superhero. Actually, maybe it does. I mean, no card is more accepted on the planet, so you can use it for practically anything, like plane tickets, so you could fly like a superhero, or at the hospital, so you'd have x-ray vision. And you can use it to get cash at ATMs all over. So in any situation, you can just say, stand back, I'll handle this. 
So maybe MasterCard could make you a superhero. All you need now is a secret identity. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card. It's smart money. It's late morning on the Big Island, and there are hints of the savage heat to come. Patty O'Brien had hoped to finish first in her age group, but that won't happen unless she quickly repairs her flat. The Iron Man, the ultimate test of body and mind, can also be heck on your equipment. Nearing the halfway mark, Wendy Ingram remains the women's leader, but her advantage is shrinking by the moment. Just 25 yards behind, weaving through a scattering of male competitors, five-time champion Paula Newby Frazier steadily closing the gap. Unsure of how her injured ankle will hold up in the marathon, Newby Frazier's strategy is to build an advantage in the bike. And certainly one detects a look of urgency on that face. Meanwhile, Wendy seems to be aware of Paula's imminent arrival. As Newbie Fraser is about to overtake her, Ingram surges. Newbie Fraser steadily continues her uphill charge. At this particular moment of truth, Ingram loses the lead, but the bike is not even half over. And Wendy is tenacious. Last year, she competed here with a broken foot. She's been toughened by this island. Paula says she takes energy from this place, and she's won five of the last seven Ironmans. Eight years ago, 1985, that's the last time an American woman won the Gatorade Ironman triathlon. And now with newbie Frazier riding powerfully, Wendy Ingram is still close and may have the best shot at upholding the honor of the Stars and Stripes. Still five minutes behind, New Zealand native Erin Baker is pushing to reach the leaders, but she hasn't been able to gain any ground. This day has not gone according to plan for Erin. She was roughed up at the swim start, had her nose bloodied a little bit, but she would be encouraged if she knew what was taking place ahead of her. At the front, Wendy Ingram has regrouped and she passes Paula Newby Frazier. The only question, can Wendy keep up this pace? Meanwhile, an extremely frustrated Patty O'Brien has been a spectator for a while now, stuck by the side of the road for 15 minutes. But Iron Man officials have now come to her aid and her race should soon begin again. Jurgen Zak is maintaining a hurtful pace as the course heads north on the Kona coast, where the dry lava beds give way to countryside that hints of Ireland. And much as if in Ireland, it's raining. A magical, gentle, refreshing rain that seems to mesmerize Zak as the pace slows to that of a rolling rest stop. Kyle Sage retakes the lead. Busto seems anxious to awaken the pack from its brief slumber, and this fan of Willie Nelson and Elvis gets the measure of, and then sprints by Alan. Alan seems content to rehydrate while enjoying this rare shower. Bustos came within 12 miles of victory a year ago and says he has trained harder than ever before in 1993. As the rain continues to fall, he motors toward the front. Like Zach, who seems ready to overtake, Bustos wants to make these miles uncomfortable for Mark Allen. Christian Bustos has been in this race for the last four years. All races won by Allen, and Bustos knows that if Allen isn't made to work on the bike, he won't be beaten on the run. Earlier this year, Bustos won the German Ironman in near record time, but it is in this race that he feels the burden of a country's expectations. Kyle Sage, who once helped teach captive dolphins to return to their natural habitats, gets a short course on leading the Ironman from Christian Booster. The sport's leading professor, Alan, knows he's a marked man, and he sets off to keep Bustos in view. His opponents seem to be ganging up on him, and he seems perturbed. 
And here's a new twist, a complete unknown surging toward the lead. German Holger Lorenz is making his first visit to Kona, an impressive one. This part-time mechanic from Breton passes countryman Jürgen Zack and then goes by Mark Allen. After the brief shower and amidst this rolling countryside, Lorenz overtakes Bustos and assumes the lead. But this move can't be all disappointing to Bustos, as a startling attack by a triathlete with no known portfolio has ignited the pace, and back in the pack has made Allen pay. Riders can finish the bike in four and a half hours. For 76-year-old Jim Ward, a World War II veteran, it will take twice as long. And then, in darkness, he'll finally start the marathon. Perhaps I'm too old to be doing this kind of stuff, and my legs hurt and everything hurts. <laughs> and uh, I still have a long way to go uh, in the middle of something like the Iron Man. I, uh, I find it, I got to stop thinking positively, I tell myself, and I begin thinking to the worst experiences I've had back in World War II, and, and uh, I think, well, hell, I've been sleeping well, I've been eating well, I've been training for this, and so forth. Uh, this isn't all that tough. Not that tough for a man who started doing triathlons at age 68. Ahead on the moist streets of Avi, a quaint oasis of humanity, Holger Lorenz approaches the turnaround at mile 50. Behind him, what was once a pack of a dozen riders is now shrinking. Even with another 60 miles to ride, those who fall too far behind here won't be a factor in this race any longer. Jürgen Zapp heads what is left of the chase crew. And it also includes Alan, Holly Kiru, Christian Bustos, Chucky V, Wolfgang Dietrich, and Ken Glock. And as we move into the second half of the bike, a mechanic from Breton, Germany is speeding along at some 25 miles an hour. Record-breaking pace. Back to the big island of the 15th Gatorade Ironman in a moment. From 50 states and over 49 countries, they come, putting body and soul to the ultimate challenge. But when they get to the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, they all speak the same language. Gatorade! 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 Because no matter where they're from, endurance athletes from around the globe know that Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps them perform at their best. It's proven year after year in Hawaii. Nothing translates into performance like Gatorade. Before you thought to dream, Cannon had a vision. Before you have a problem, Cannon has the solution. We have a way of looking ahead to give your office unlimited possibilities right now. When the rest say you can't, Cannon says you can. Cannon. Now you can. Man, when I get a cold, it's a killer cold. I'm not taking a four-hour pill like Actifed. The Sudafed, it wears off too quick. I take contact. Man, I'm out there all day. Need something that works 12 hours, and contact works 12 hours. It relieves the congestion in your head. You know, your ready nose. The four-hour medication, take it in the morning. Get to work, it's gone. Take a contact, and it'll take you through the whole day. One contact gives you 12 hours of time-released relief. No work, no pay. Contact helps turn sick days into work days. I love steak, especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. Tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... It gets you here, and it gets you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. Up at Avi, as the lead women head for the turnaround, this is the Hawaii you generally imagine, the thick greenery. But up here, it's also ranch country, where some of the cowboys round up cattle unconventionally on motorcycles. Now let's go to Hannah Storm for more on the women's race. 
And Dan, still in the lead, is Wendy Ingram of Walnut Creek, California. This is Wendy's fourth Ironman, and thus far, her best performance. But as we watch Ingram slow for the turnaround in Javi, you see she still hasn't shaken a determined Paula Newby Frazier. There's Paula, appearing poised to retake the lead when it suits her. As Wendy heads into the second half of the bike, she has the opportunity to recast her image on the triathlon circuit. She's known as somewhat of a carefree individual, but if she can keep pushing Newby Frazier, today she will gain a good measure of respect as a tough competitor. Many minutes and miles behind, a vision in day glow color among the lava fields, Madonna Booter. Though 63 years old, she's very much a modern nun and pioneer. In her work and her play, she's chosen to serve God in a most unique fashion. I thought that running a marathon was the epitome of foolishness for my age. I was then over 50. And a triathlon, I thought, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> but then I got to considering and thought, oh, I used to swim as a kid. I used to ride my mother's bike as a kid. And now that I can run, why not give triathlon a try? And so I did. And I've been trying to do it ever since. <laughs> at her residence at Spokane, Washington, you'll see the rewards of this convert to triathlons. She's even been profiled in a recent book, December Champions. However, she won't allow competition to disrupt her spiritual life. I am always insistent that I get to Mass. I have never missed going to Mass because of an event. Sister Madonna is with a modern order, Sisters for Christian Community, which allows her to live on her own and choose the ministries she wants to help. She is a tremendous inspiration to all of us. People uh, marvel how she can integrate so profoundly her athletic gifts and skills and, uh, and do it so, so modestly, so wonderfully, and still be open to the call of the poor, the, the distress, the people. Sister trains by running or biking to all of her various ministries. On this day, she's volunteering at Cops West, a liaison between the community and police. Later, it's another ministry, work that has deeply affected her. The jail ministry is always a very humbling experience. It really makes me realize that but for the grace of God, there go I. It, it really keeps me grounded to be able to, to minister with them. So good to see you in such good spirits. Sister Madonna competes in about a dozen races a year, and she'll keep at it as long as it's fun. I don't want it to uh, interfere with my enjoyment of life or for the spirit of competition ever to get in the way of, of realizing where I came from in the first place. If it ever comes to be drudgery, or I have to or else, then it's time to stop. I've been told I'm, I'm an inspiration to those that are nearing my age, and, and this is one reason that it keeps me going, that it, I feel like, all right, if it's, it's helping somebody, if it's inspiring someone, then fine, if that's the way the Lord wants to use me. As long as he gives me the stamina to keep going, then I will. And finishing today in under 13 hours would be the answer to Sister Madonna's prayers. Hey, you know what that F on your leg stands for, don't you? Fast. Let's go back to Dan Hicks with the men's race. Heading back to the lava fields, another 40 miles of road left. Jurgen Zak is on the move, passing Holger Lorenz. The gray sheltering sky is now gone. The temperature nearing 90 degrees. And Zach, a strong cyclist, continues to do as promised, ensuring a punishing pace. Mystery man Holger Lorenz is fading now, and defending champion Mark Allen pushes forward, responding to the Zach attack. He's losing ground to Zach, and he doesn't know why. 
Zack worked with bike guru Dan Rock to reconfigure his ride, and with every turn of his pedals, he's pulling ahead as he pushes a larger gear than anyone else in the race. Alan may not know why Zack is gapping him, but he knows that he has to cover every move. And suddenly, Alan has another worry. Finland's Pauli Kiru has found fresh inspiration and asserts himself for the first time in the race. In the withering heat, through this desert of lava, Zack's charge has obliterated what was once a snug, orderly pack. And Mike Pig, second in this race in 1988 and a favorite here, is dropping further and further off the lead. Pig, once the young upstart, now an established and comfortable veteran, is overtaken by Chucky V, the brash but needy triathlete, whose home is often his 10-year-old compact car. But Chucky V isn't in this race any longer either. The leaders, it appears, are now out of reach. Now five stalks at Bustos, Ken Gla, Wolfgang Dietrich, Mark Allen, Pauli Kiru. Dietrich presses forward. Though he has improved significantly over the last two years, the run is his weakest event, and if he is to have a chance here, he needs to build a cushion in the bike. And the best way to do it is to ride with Zach, if he can hold on, though he too may pay a heavy price for doing so. 30 miles to go, and as Zach hammers away, Dietrich gains. It is nearing high noon, and the cool of the early morning is a distant memory. The suffocating Hawaiian heat is here, as feared as any opponent. Now a chase group of four is in a precarious state, still within striking distance, but also on the verge of losing touch with the Germans up ahead. Though his running friends in Germany call him Mr. Speck, Mr. Bacon, because of his excess body fat, here Zach looks svelte and powerful. Dietrich is still trailing his former roommate and training partner, but he's putting distance between himself and those in the pack who could run him down in the marathon. The contenders have been further strung out. Bustos is struggling, and this torturous pace could negate his superior running ability. And behind him, Ken Gla is dangling off a precipice, about to be another victim of the heat, humidity, and the agonizing tempo established by Jurgen Zak. ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have something more advanced giving you a closer shave with less irritation than foam edge gel ultimate closeness ultimate comfort that's the edge there are times you can feel your body heat rising higher and higher Fortunately, there's Degree Antiperspirant. It's body heat activated. Every time your body heat rises, Degree releases extra protection to keep you cooler, drier. You're up next. Thank you. Good morning. Nothing protects you like Degree. Your body heat turns it on. Is there trouble brewing in Buffalo? The thing about the POs is I, I think they're a team right now that's in a little bit too much turmoil. Too much complaining, too much bickering, and they've got to get rid of that to win. But there's no damn controversy around with the Buffalo Bills. Let's put that straight right now, okay? Or is there? OJ has the answer Sunday on NFL Live, followed by great football action.
Dan Hicks with Craig Masback and Hannah Storm welcoming you back to the Gatorade Iron Man to the Big Island. And here, amidst miles and miles of black, boulder-sized lava, a lonely traveler. The defending women's champion, Paula Newby Frazier. Newby Frazier has finally put away Wendy Ingram, and with 30 miles left in the bike, she's reached a crucial point. She has to build a big lead here because of that ankle injury that's limited her marathon training. I really have no idea what I can run. I really don't have any idea what, what I'm capable of running right now. You know, you know, I could say it's going to be probably 10 minutes slower because I you know, haven't had enough running. I can say I'm really rested. I'm going to run 10 minutes faster. You know what I mean? All those years of base and, and that are just going to come together nicely for me. <laughs> Newbie Frazier only started serious training for the marathon three weeks ago. And though she's not in optimum cardiovascular condition, she still has to push herself. Meanwhile, Newby Frazier's chief rival, two-time champion Erin Baker, is vigorously maintaining her pursuit, and she assumes second place, passing Wendy Ingram. Well, Wendy certainly deserves those encouraging words from Erin Baker, although it appears as if Wendy doesn't have a chance to win this race. She's gone from simply being one of the stronger swimmers here at the Ironman in the past to really becoming a major factor in the race today. They're heading for the Kona Surf Resort. The men are nearing the end of a long 112-mile ride. Zach is still on record pace. Nonetheless, fellow countryman Dietrich has stayed close. And Mark Allen and Polly Kiru are still in contact, just a little more than a minute away. Zach's steam power has certainly been impressive. And he's turned the bike into something it wasn't last year. A challenge for the champion. Zach, with Dietrich 25 yards behind, now zooms downhill to the bike-to-run transition at the Kona Surf Resort. Kuru, in fourth place, prepares himself for the final transition, where important seconds can be gained or lost. and Yuru are still about a minute behind. As the Germans now head for the changing tent, Zach is paying the price for a torrid bike run. His time, 4 hours, 27 minutes, 42 seconds, smashes the record he established here a year ago by almost 5 minutes. After almost 5 hours on the bike, the triathletes are struggling hobbling as they attempt to regain their land legs. Now, they implore the body to restart unused muscles. Dietrich is the first out of the tent and the first on the marathon course. Soak the water. Alan hurries, while Zach, the first off the bike, is slow getting out. It's 12.30, the sun high overhead. Dietrich finds his shade. Kiru had an excellent bike-to-run transition and is suddenly in second place. Zach, the former track athlete, is the only one of the top five who changes into running short, but looks little like a runner as he lumbers along. Like the bike, the marathon opens cruelly with a steady climb. Now in third and fourth, Zach and Alan appear wobbly, the brutal bike ride perhaps having taken its toll on both of them. Finland's Kiru looks to be the freshest of the lead group and begins to close on the front runner. Dietrich, the self-professed bad runner, plods onward up the energy-sapping early climb. Allen steps by Zach, who's moving in slow motion. Zach helpless as his shot at the Ironman title disappears. His plan to kill off Allen has turned out to be a suicide mission. Here's Christian Bustos, finally off the bike, about to begin his strongest event, the run. Number two last year here, he's a 219 marathon, but the leaders have already been on the road for two minutes. And one of those up ahead looks very strong, Pali Kiiru, the former speed skater from Valkiakoski, Finland. He easily passes Dietrich to take the lead. Heir to a great tradition of Finnish runners and cross-country skiers, 
He's Finland's most popular athlete, and for the last four years, he's been the number one European in this race. We'll be right back to the Gatorade Ironman in a moment. Monday on The Fresh Prince, Hillary's getting engaged. It's a bungee jump. Isn't it romantic? One problem. Marry me. Then on an all-new Blossom, you won't believe what Joey's done. Won't, won't. To wind up on TV. Oh, God. Find that on Blossom following The Fresh Prince. Monday. You want a new truck, but you're not sure you can afford one? No problem. Not at Dick Anthony Chevrolet Geo. Lease this full-size Chevy pickup for just $169 a month. Don't want to make monthly payments? No problem. Drive this pickup for 24 months for just $51.37. Want a smaller truck? No problem. At Dick Enthys, we've got new S10 pickups for just $199 a month, or just $57.36 on a Smart Lease Plus. So if you want a new truck, we have them at prices you can afford. Now at Dick Enthy Chevrolet Geo on your Recat Dicks in Southgate. When we build a Maglite flashlight, we craft the body from a single piece of aircraft aluminum. We seal and gem with high gray rubber O-rings. We give it a patented self-cleaning switch and a patented adjustable beam. The Maglite flashlight. Brighter. Tougher. Made in America. Flawlessly engineered. The Maglite is a work of art that works. This holiday season, give the gift of light with a Maglite flashlight. A cheap mattress at 40% off is still a cheap mattress. But 40% off quality bedding like Simmons Beauty Rest or Serta Perfect Sleeper appeals to everyone. And here's a Gardner White deal that appeals to everyone. Right now, get Serta Perfect Sleeper or Simmons Beauty Rest from just $99 each piece. Gardner White delivers the next day free and removes your old bedding free. Plus, no down payment, no payments, and no interest till next June. White Furniture, we're known by the money you keep. Be here tonight at 7.30 for the Michigan Lottery Megabucks Giveaway Show on Channel 4. Hawaii's Kona Coast, and today, it's the ultimate test of body and mind as well as character, the Gatorade Iron Man. Right now, he's the man to beat, Polly Kuru, the analytical athlete, assessing his body moment to moment, heartbeat to heartbeat. But how much control can anyone really have in this event? First in the swim, second in the bike, Wolfgang Dietrich now falls to third as Allen overtakes him under the welcoming shade of a Lee Drive. They've been racing for six hours. The legs are stiff, the feet numb, the mind has trouble focusing. Just look at Christian Bustos. Everyone feels the pain. At the bike to run transition, Paula Newby Frazier leaps onto the marathon course. She has donned a brace on her injured right ankle. She made great time through the end of the bike and has a substantial cushion going into the marathon. Aaron Baker is almost seven minutes behind and the long chase and the paralyzing heat is evident on her face. But she says she has been strengthened by the birth of her first child and her will has not been weakened. Marching off 620 miles, Kiru has built his lead to three minutes. And he collects $1,500 for being the first to reach the Timex Prime, adding to the $1,500 he already picked up for hitting the Timex Prime first in the bike. Meanwhile, Allen continues to lose ground. Could it be? Is the streak about to end? Aaron Baker dashes out of the changing tent. Paula Newby Frazier has established a tremendous advantage, but can she hold it? Kiru has reached the Queen K Highway, where the crowds disappear, the heat soars, and the racer must find encouragement from within. Kiru is ahead by a half mile, on the verge of breaking the race open, yet the awkwardness in the stride of this unnatural runner seems to be getting more pronounced. This is where the grip thrives. This is where he lives. Allen has been down this lonely road many times and learned how to conquer it. The Chilean flag waves for a national hero who feels the weight of an entire country's expectations. And as Christian Bustos climbs out of Kailua Kona, almost a mile out of the lead, our Craig Massback is with Greg Welch, second here two years ago, a spectator this year. 
Greg, a year ago, the pay and save hill sort of killed off your chances in this race. You've seen the top guys go by. Who looks good? Well, at this stage, it's all Pauli Kiru, isn't it? I mean, he looks great. You've got to give him the credit. He's three minutes up on Mark, um, about 4.15 on Wolfgang. And, you know, Christian, Christian also looks pretty good, but um, I've seen Christian look better. Uh, I think it's Pauli Kiru and uh, Mark and Wolfgang for the top three at the moment. It's got to be tough for you being injured and standing here watching these guys run by. Absolutely, you know. Um, you know, if I wasn't standing here with a knee brace and uh, with this jacket on, I'd I'd be out there duking it out with them. It'd be a real ding dong battle, I tell you. Um, it's hard, but you know, uh, I'm alive. You know, I'll be back next year better than ever. That's for sure. Eighteen miles. Polly Kiru must outrun the grip for the next 18 miles. But some here would say Polly Kiru also must outrun the myth, the most intimidating presence in the history of the sport. The race has yet to be decided, but the deciding factor might not be strictly a matter of ability or endurance. It may come down to simply this, respect. It's an incredible deference that Mark Allen's competitors show him. As with many great athletes, it's almost as if they expect him to win. Here's Craig Masback. Like Michael Jordan and Joe Montana, Mark Allen has dominated his sport. All three have found a way to win no matter what the circumstances, but for Allen, this ability was nurtured in adversity. In those races where I fell apart, I saw the darkest parts of myself, the parts of myself that were not strong, that were weak, that were expectation did not meet reality. I've looked inside there. I've seen some things inside myself. And until you've done that, I think it's difficult when you come against the wind, the heat, the humidity, the other racers who are at their top, to, to move through that. You hit those fears and you, until you face them, until you look at them, you don't move to the other side of that fear where the real power is. In 1989, Allen found the power when he separated himself from Dave Scott, the six-time Ironman champion. Since then, he has owned this race, and his competitors have shown him a respect that borders on submission. Mark Allen has talent, heart, and uh, knows what he's doing. Mark is strong. He's, I mean round up you know he's not just a good athlete he's just strong he knows what he's doing and uh, so is, there's a lot of to, to learn but you know I mean everybody's get older and maybe he makes a mistake some year that's what we're waiting for I think all of us you have to have special talent to, ra to win race like this four four times in row and it really it really gives me the sense that uh, he can focus and uh, he can uh, handle the pain and handle the pressure, and uh, he really is meant to beat. If they want to fear me, great. If they want to think they can win, great. Go ahead and do it. But what I'm doing out there is I'm going from here to there as fast as I can, the best I can. But as yet, Allen has not dented Kiru's lead. In the last four championship years, he has never been this far behind this late in the marathon. Back along the coast in Kailua, Kona, Paula Newby Frazier continues to push towards her sixth Ironman title. As she becomes the first female to reach the Timex Prime, Newby Frazier earns $1,500. She also collected $1,500 for being first to the Timex Prime in the bike. A mile back on Ali'i Drive, the Aaron Baker Fan Club. Her mother, child, and husband, Scott Molina, the 1988 champion. Aaron says her family has helped her put winning and losing in perspective. If someday her son, Miguel, decides to follow his parents' example, he'll find out the triathlons aren't just for adults anymore. This was the scene in Nashville, Tennessee the Iron Kids Bred Triathlon National Championship. Boys and girls ages 7 to 14 competing in smaller versions of the Ironman. Just as excited, just as nervous as the pros. 
in the junior division, the swim is 100 meters. Then a 3.1 mile bike. Finally, a half mile run. It has stirred imaginations. I want to do the Iron Woman when I grow up. Thinking about it, but every time I think about it, I think it's so, so a lot. Before you thought to dream, Cannon had a vision. Before you have a problem, Cannon has the solution. We have a way of looking ahead to give your office unlimited possibilities right now. When the rest say you can't, Cannon says you can. Cannon. Now you can. When you go out to play, you're gonna get thirsty. And when you're thirsty, you better have your Gatorade. It goes down easy, quenches to the core. Quenches your deep down body thirst 30% faster than water. This is a MasterCard, okay? It doesn't make you special. Actually, maybe it does. I mean, right now, the Master Values program can save you up to 25% on all kinds of stuff. You just get the Master Values coupon thingy from your statement, go to one of the stores on the list and say, hey, I got a MasterCard, how about a deal? And they'll say, for you, no problem. So I guess MasterCard really does mean you're special. Just don't let it go to your head. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. Look in your store for even more Master Values coupons and special offers from Canada Dry. I love Steak, especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. Tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... They get you here, and they get you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. And we bring you back to the 15th Gatorade Ironman Championship on the Big Island. What was once a three-minute lead over Mark Allen is now down to 90 seconds. Like Allen, Pali Kiru limits the number of his competitions and points to this race. However, Kiru's running mechanics are now awful. No knee lift and feet flailing outward. He's slowing dramatically as he reaches the turnaround point on the run. As Kiyuru fades, Allen seems to be gaining strength. He runs with a confident, efficient stride. Suddenly, they have a chance to size one another up for the first time since the bike-to-run transition. Allen looks great, and Kiyuru can't help but be discouraged. Behind them, Jürgen Zak and Christian Bustos are losing ground, unable to up the ante by increasing their pace. This must be especially frustrating for Bustos, one of the best runners in the field. The championship seems clearly out of their grasp. The Natural Energy Lab. The turnoff into the Valley of Doom at mile 16. Heading down a barren stretch of road descending toward the Pacific. Government land used for scientific research. It's here where Mark Allen, the grip, is about to put Polly Q to the ultimate test. He knows now Allen is coming, but the stale heat this windless early afternoon is weakening him. Polly Q, cautious, systematic, is in the grasp of a place, a race, and a man he cannot at last control. Steadily, confidently, Allen is closing, closing with each step. For a time in the first miles of this marathon, his entire race was in doubt. Allen was hurting, but now it's inevitable. The grip is about to crush another would-be champion. When the moment comes, the master has a polite greeting, and the opponent gently surrenders, prepared to accept defeat by a superior athlete. In the harsh flats of the energy lab, ironically, Kiru's battery seems all but burnout. 
This year, the strategy was to batter Allen at the bike, but the conspirators did not survive their own plan. Soon, Allen faces those he has conquered. Everyone has physical strength, Wolfgang Dietrich had said, but to win the Iron Man, you have to have physical and mental strength. Across from Dietrich was the supreme mental competitor. Jürgen Zapp, Allen was damaged by his record-breaking ride, but survived. And Christian Bustos, drifting further and further behind. Finally, in the killing fields of the Natural Energy Lab, his body breaks down. Don't drop it. Yeah, try not. The Energy Lab has claimed another triathlete, and Christian Bustos won't be leaving under his own power. You're not, you're not there running anymore. You're not running anymore. You're all done, okay? You had a good race. Next year. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon, the day at its hottest. And for Mark Allen, there are eight more miles of road. And as he heads up the slow incline toward the Queen K Highway, he's on pace to break his own record. This race once puzzled him. It broke him. But once again, he's found a way to endure, to push past the pain and self-doubt. But will the same be said of five-time champion Paula Newby Frazier? At mile 13, she's doing all she can to fight the effects of the midday sun and the strain of too many miles. Newby Frazier was not able to properly train for this marathon, and this is the price of her misfortune. We'll be right back to Hawaii after these words. Looking good, strong. Hi, I'm Dave Scott. If you want to achieve peak athletic performance, I recommend the Ironman Triathlon Series from Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold. The Ironman Triathlon Edition of the Nordic Sport Cross Training System combines a cross-country skier, stepper, and treadmill all in one, and it's specifically designed for the serious sports enthusiast. From the programmable workout computer that monitors your results to the non-motorized treadmill designed for a safe workout. But you shouldn't rely on aerobic training alone, because strength training increases endurance and improves athletic performance. That's why you need the Nordic Flex Ironman Triathlon Edition. You can choose from up to 32 ergonomically designed exercises that let you focus on the muscle group you want to develop. And the patented isokinetic resistance mechanism automatically adjusts to your strength level for fast results and a safe workout. The Ironman Triathlon Series from Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold for people who take their sports seriously. Call now to order or to get free information. What do you need? Tums. Eddie, this doesn't speak well for the cuisine. It's not the cuisine, it's the calcium. Sure. How about these? They use aluminum and magnesium. This uses an aluminum salt. I told you. They want the calcium. But they're all acids. They want the Tums. They all help to fix the heartburn. But Tums has calcium. Something your body needs anyway. All right. I'll go get the Tums. Tums Calcium-rich Tums. Tums, Tums. It's got to be the cuisine. Until now, lighted watch dials were really hard to see in the dark. But the Indiglo nightlight from Timex is so dramatically brighter. Nighttime will never be the same. The Bills, the Eagles, a must-win game for Kelly and company in their pursuit of Miami. Then the Chiefs, the Broncos, it's Montana versus Elway. The stakes are mile high in one of the biggest games of the season as two AFC West powers collide. An NFL doubleheader, Sunday on NBC. As we bring you back to Hawaii at the 15th Gatorade Ironman Championship, a weary Polanubi Frazier steps along the melted lava in the searing heat of the natural energy lab. Can she hold on? Ruby Frazier seems to be in pain with almost every step she takes, and she's got eight miles left. By contrast, Mark Allen, heading for Kailua Kona, appears composed, refreshed. Paula's doing everything she can to stay hydrated, almost desperate to find ways to keep her body moving. Some of the 1,500 who began this race catch a glimpse of the reigning king of Kona on his way to the fifth straight title. Newbie Frazier hits the final turnaround. She'll find out soon if her lead is secure. Allen 
lengthening its lead, takes advantage of the last aid station, the finish near it. On the other side, newbie Frazier sees Aaron Baker a mile behind. It's still a substantial lead. Allen has reached Kailu Okona. Less than a mile remains. He can taste it now. Newbie Frazier, though out of the depths of the energy lab, isn't out of danger. A half mile to go, and with the crowd thickening, the championship decided, Allen still can't resist one last backward glance. Though he won't be first, Kyuru, Purdy, slowing, is still determined to at least hold on to second. After a 2.4 mile swim, 112 miles on the bike, a marathon, 26.2 miles, Allen is rejuvenated by the electricity and a leaky drive. The last stretch, the last 385 yards. that would disable Mark Allen. And with a screaming child on the way, they may be finally getting their wish. Some seven minutes behind, Polly Kuru is headed into downtown Kailua Kona. It seems he has a lock on second. Now let's send you back to Craig Masback with Mark Allen at the finish line. Mark, congratulations. Fifth straight, a new record. But early on, they were getting away from you. What was going on in the beginning of the run? I thought realistically that I was going to have to drop out somewhere on the run. I just, the bike ride took a lot out of me today. And uh, at, even at going out of town, I still felt pretty slow. And Polly was just easily gaining time on me. Uh, something changed. And I, I started to pick up the speed. And then all of a sudden, he died. I picked it up. And wow, five times. Unbelievable. The proud flying Finn finally has his moment on the for the fifth straight year, he'll be the top European finisher. In his seventh Ironman, this will be his best finish, his best time. More than that, he had Mark Allen, the legend, chasing him for more than half a marathon. For the first time, Kuru seems to have dispensed with his machine-like approach and had the courage to trust his own heart. Now we'll look at the final men's standings. The order is Allen, Kiuru of Finland, Germany's Wolfgang Dietrich, who had the top swim, Ken Gla of Westchester, Pennsylvania, and in fifth, Germany's Jürgen Zak, who had the fastest bike. Christian Bustos was not able to finish after experiencing severe back pain brought on by dehydration. And as Allen heads for the medical tent, he takes a moment to greet Jim McLaren, the triathlete filled by two tragic accidents, now paralyzed. Many find inspiration in Allen's excellence. Allen gathers strength from knowing Jim McLaren. Up on the Queen K Highway, Paula Newby Frazier is at the final aid station, mile 25. Her triathlon has slowed to a walk. The legs numb, rubbery. She's never suffered like this on the Big Island, and she'll have to find something from deep within if there is to be a sixth championship. From 50 states and over 49 countries, they come, putting body and soul to the ultimate challenge. But when they get to the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, they all speak the same language. Gatorade! 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 
because no matter where they're from, endurance athletes from around the globe know that Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps them perform at their best. It's proven year after year by Mark Allen. Nothing translates into performance like Gatorade. Why get an inferior foam shave when you could have the best? Why choose ordinary lubrication when you could have the richest? Why settle for average protection against razor irritation when you could have something more advanced, giving you a closer shave with less irritation than foam? Edge Gel, ultimate closeness, ultimate comfort. That's the edge. I love the berry bars. We like the shakes. We have the cereal for breakfast. Or as a snack. More fiber, less fat, and packed with high energy carbohydrates. I've made Matola Foods part of my active lifestyle. Matola Foods, chosen sponsor of the Ironman Triathlon. Call now and discover what everyone's talking about. Matola Foods have really made a difference for me. Imagine what they could do for you. Call now and experience the healthy Matola difference. <coughs> Jim Fansler's cold won't give him a minute's rest. But he's about to break free with an effervescent rush of relief. Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime. It speeds powerful medicines to free your breathing, relieve your runny nose, soothe your aches, and quiet your cough so you can rest, all without alcohol. Nothing rushes relief like Alka-Seltzer Plus Nighttime. What does it take to be a champion? Paula Newby Frazier is answering the question. Her soul is sear, her body in agony. Somehow, she's persevered. Now the finish looms ahead. And for the once proud champion, Aaron Baker, time to accept the inevitable. This island does not crush everyone. Sue Latshaw of Boulder, Colorado, has steadily worked her way into third, and she moves with certainty, purpose, her best performance ever on Kona. And what has happened to Wendy? Wendy Ingram, the leader through 60 miles of the bike, now just hanging on, hoping to remain among the top five. In the other race, bidding to win her age group, 40-year-old magazine editor Patty O'Brien is 10 miles from the finish. Last year, he couldn't finish this race. Now, 24-year-old Chuck E.V. is the sport's rising star. He's got a PR here of 923.49. He's going to blow that away. He did that in 91. He's going to come across in 840.41, and he's a happy boy. As Chucky V exults, out near the start of the run, we find our yeah, Michael Chucky Bryant v. conserving energy. Being a well, the cycle went uh, just about how I expected it. I was able to get my heart rate down and keep it where I needed it, but everybody went by me. I think I passed two people, max. So, uh, you know, I think it took uh, somewhere around six hours and 15 minutes. So right now I'm looking at the run, uh, if I can, Walk a mile, jog a mile, sort of alternate like that, keep my legs loose, keep the food in me, keep my energy level up. It's a decent chance of finishing by uh, possibly by sundown. On a leaky drive at the end, she's not running like the Paul Duty Frazier anyone remembers. She's still on the verge of breaking down. But strengthened by cheers, she summons a final kick and with an effort breaks into a smile. Sixth time, Carl Bibi Frazier of Zimbabwe and Encinitas, California, crosses the finish line first. Brother Stewart Bird, Craig Wells, speeding up the finish line. Medical, 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 med
She's the finest female triathlete ever. But when her career is finally over, this may be the day everyone remembers. The day Paula Newby Frazier, undertrained, recovering from injury, near collapse, somehow won this brutal event and won it convincingly. For the 32-year-old rival, Aaron Baker, there is a depressing thought to consider. Outperformed by a dazed Paula Newby Frazier, is she finally past her prime? Let's join Hannah Storm now with the women's win. Dan, I'm here with Paula and her supportive brother, Stuart. Paula, the expression on your face at the finish line said that this was an extremely difficult race for you. Was it the ankle? No, my ankle was fine. I think it was more the lack of training, uh, the fact that I haven't been able to run enough miles. The second half of the marathon, I think, uh, was really hard for me. I started dying halfway. And uh, it was just a case of crisis management out there. And the last five or six miles, uh, I had to go pretty far down inside to get to this finish line. I mean, it, it was, I can't say that I enjoyed the last few miles. I mean, I didn't know if I was even going to get here. It's now Aaron Baker's turn to feel the warmth and the power of the crowd on Elite Drive. This defeat will hurt, but not right now. Not as the new mother completes her comeback. Having again lasted through the heat, the humidity, the pain, and the punishment. Having again survived the hardest day in sports. Now a look at the women's results. Paula Newby Frazier, her sixth title. Aaron Baker, then three Americans. Sue Lackshaw, Karen Spires, and Wendy Ingram. Every Iron Man is divided in two. As the pros leave, the night watch at Kona begins. At sunset, the long day's journey ends for Patty O'Brien. But out there in the lava fields, it goes on. The race continues for a 63-year-old nun of so much good cheer. And under darkening skies, Mike O'Brien has miles and miles to go. As day becomes night on the big island, for many, the end is still, oh, so many hours away. From 50 states and over 49 countries, they come, putting body and soul to the ultimate challenge. But when they get to the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, they all speak the same language. Gatorade! 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 Because no matter where they're from, endurance athletes from around the globe know that Gatorade Thirst Quencher helps them perform at their best. It's proven year after year by Mark Allen. Nothing translates into performance like Gatorade. Before you thought to dream, Canon had a vision. Before you have a problem, Canon has the solution. We have a way of looking ahead to give your office unlimited possibilities right now. When the rest say you can't, Canon says you can. Canon, now you can. I love Steak, especially a, a thick, juicy T-bone. A1 all over the top. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm in the mood for something spicy. Tongue-tingling spicy. Spice is just... They get you here. They get you right here. I want something with gumption. Something with a peppery kick that's spicy. A1 Bold. Yeah, that's what I'm in the mood for. Original A1 and new A1 Bold. They're how steak is done. The Gatorade Ironman Triathlon, presented by Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold, and by The Gatorade Company, official sponsor of the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon World Championship. By MasterCard. MasterCard, it's more than a credit card, it's smart money. By A1 Steak Sauce. A1, it's how burgers are done. And by Nordic Sport and Nordic Flex Gold from Nordic Track, the leader in fitness equipment. This is the final turn. The turn onto a Lee E Drive. And even as the incomparable Mark Allen has told us, not even he knows, truly knows, if he'll finish until this turn. 
It was daylight when the elite triathletes reached this point, and for those who persist alone in the darkness, there was the glow of the floodlit finish line and the cheers of the crowd who have watched and waited faithfully to bring them home. All of them, every last one. Seventy-six years old, Jim Ward is alone in the darkness, the deadline nearing the close of the course at the stroke of midnight, and he's fighting an unrelenting fatigue. In front of him, there is image after image of unconfined joy, a persistence that defies pain, that conquers doubt. And you begin to understand a little why this day and night can have so much meaning. Congratulations, Mike O'Brien. Is this anything like winning an Olympic gold medal? And congratulations to Madonna Booter, keeping the faith in your seventh Iron Man. Here on the Night Watch in Kona, from the darkness they're called, hold to the safety of the floodlit finish. sort of held at bay throughout the day, that control, that calm. What it's taken to get there, to get you to the front first, it comes out. It's those last couple hundred yards where I finally know this is the end and I'm going to make it. Production assistance provided by American Airlines, official carrier of the Gatorade Ironman Triathlon World Championship. American Airlines, something special in the air. Media accommodations provided by the Cuyahoga Beach Hotel.
This is the NBC Sports.